Hi, friends. Friends new and old, community, beautiful and bold. I don't know. That's not a great rhyme. <laughs> How are you? Um, I'd love to hear. Let me know in the chat. Um, I mean, you could tell me just how you are if you wanted to. Hi, Leticia or Leticia. It's great to see you. Great to meet you. You get a shout out. If, you get, if you're one of the first few folks to chat, you get a shout out. Um, here's my check-in question for today. I promise not to scream at y'all the whole time. Hi, Martin. Good evening to you. My check-in question in Hi Milagros and Nora Lynn and LaShawn. All right. Sorry. Too many people now. Um, oh, now a bunch of folks are chiming in. Oh, say what's up. It's good to see y'all. So my check-in question is, what is your superpower? What are you great at? And you can own publicly in front of these 444 folks who are here. What is something that you can confidently say, I am good at this thing? And it could be something silly or it could be something serious. I don't really care. I mean, I care what it is. I just don't care if it's silly or not silly. So, hi, welcome, Catherine and Valentina. Okay, I got to stop, stop shouting people out because then folks will expect me to. Um, bargain hunting, says Colleen. Nice. Crocheting. Come on, Courtney, not nothing. You got something that you're good at. Gymnastics, writing, staying up all night. I like that that's like a superpower you have. I'm going to be sipping on uh, Waterloo watermelon today, by the way. I'm vamping a little bit because we're going to spend one more minute to let folks arrive and then we're going to get into content. I promise. Doing multiple things at once. Carrie, nice. Same, same. Listening, says Tyler. Janessa, come on, get serious. I can wake up at whatever time I want without using an alarm. Lovely, lovely. Taking nothing and making it into something unique, whether it's an idea, concept, tidbits of knowledge. I love ideating. I love the word ideating and I love the way you're using it. Beautiful. Does being empathetic count? Of course it counts. Gabriela, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, well, hi. Hi. Welcome. I'm Ethan. I'm the college essay guy. And we're about to embark on a journey. It's a culinary journey tonight. Uh, I don't know if it's tonight for y'all. It's, it's, it's late afternoon here in Los Angeles. And um, I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. We're going to talk all the. Th we're going to talk about all the things um, college essay and application related. Here's the of official. Oh my gosh, I'm so tiny. Ashley, would you mind making me less tiny? Look how tiny I am here. This is something about this uh, platform that makes me tiny. I will only be slightly less tiny in a second, but I will be loud with my voice so you can hear me. We're talking about how do you create an outstanding college application and still stay true to yourself? What do I mean by stay true to yourself? Well, a couple things. And let me turn my screen share off for just a second so you can hear what I mean. When I'm talking about staying true to yourself, there's going to be a lot coming at you. And there probably is already a lot coming at you in terms of this college application process and, and world. And a, a, a way that you can, there are a couple, there are a couple of resources that I'm going to share with you today that are going to be about how do you, how do you ground in the things that you know? the parts of yourself that you know to be true, the, like, what, what can we use as a compass? That's going to be one of the main thing, main themes of today. And the first thing I want to say to y'all, and this is, this is wisdom from Susan Tree, a colleague and friend of mine and works with me at CG. One of the things we kind of joke about is this, um, we kind of call it the serenity prayer for college admissions. And the serenity prayer goes something like, you know, Lord, teach me to you know, basically the, the gist of it is figure out what are the things that I can control and the things that I can't and to, the wisdom to know the difference. That's the gist of it. That's not, I'm, that's not a direct quote. You can Google it if you want. Um, but essentially part of what I'm going to be talking about today is what are the things that you can control in this process? And what are those things that you can't control? And today is mostly going to be focused on what are some resources for things that you can control in this process? Because that's going to help keep you sane throughout. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Three, two, one, screen share. There I go. I'm, I'm like slightly larger. That works. All right. It could feel, and this is like an old commercial. Some of you parents are gonna, or counselors are gonna recognize this commercial from back in the day where they just turn on the speaker and it just blasts you. I'm gonna try not to do that. That's kind of how my past presentations have been. In fact, if, if I were to use a metaphor from like basically 2012, I started the blog in like 2012 to 2019, I was kind of like buffet style with all my presentations. And then I, I turned over a new leaf or I like opened a new restaurant. And it was like in the last two years, I was more like tasting menu. It's like, mm, sample this and sample that. And what I think I've kind of evolved to in 2022 is like a combo combo. I sounded like I was from the Midwest, from Chicago or something. 
So we're going to go a little buffet today and we're going to go a little tasting menu. If you don't know what a tasting menu is, I didn't learn until I was like 35 or something. I'm 42 now. But a tasting menu is basically like a chef chooses, 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 chooses like select dishes. And I'm going to be choosing some select dishes from the buffet that is CEG to help you on this process. So here's what's on the menu for today. We'll start with a few snacks. So I'm going to offer you some quick tips on creating a balanced college list. And I'll tell you what I mean by balanced. I'm gonna offer you two career exploration resources that are incredibly low cost and incredibly useful, IMHO in my humble opinion. There's an early versus regular decision podcast. So if you're trying to decide, should I apply early? Should I apply regular? What does that even mean? I've got a resource for you. And then we're gonna do one of my favorite things, personal statement. And I'm gonna give you a few tips, a few resources for brainstorming that. These are all free range, organic, values-based resources, I promise. And then we're gonna get into like some larger plates. I'm gonna to talk to you about the activities list, uh, which is an awesome way to demonstrate the stuff you've done. Uh, it's kind of your brag sheet. And I'm gonna give you like really practical stuff for up-leveling that. We're gonna talk about the Why Us essay. The Why Us essay is basically a supplemental essay that some schools ask for. Not all, but some. Most of the prompts were released three days ago. Actually, it was like, five days ago, the Common App turned over early. So I'm gonna to talk to you about how to make the YS awesome and I'm gonna do this with my hands. And then uh, if you wanna talk about coronavirus, COVID-19, there's a, there's a resource for that. I'm gonna to talk to you about two different ways to do that. Some of you have faced extreme challenges during the pandemic, some of you not so much. Either way, you can write something about that. If you want, it's optional. I'll get into that in a bit. And then I'm gonna share with you a sane college application timeline. It's got some of the things, it's, it's got all the things you need on it. Uh, we'll talk some next steps. And then during Q&A, we're going to do a book giveaway. Fun, fun. And what I'll probably do is ask some like pop quiz style question. And then whoever answers first will get the free book. In fact, let's do two books. We'll do, uh, I don't know which book we'll do. One of them, College Essay Essentials or College Admission Essentials. If we've never met before, I'm Ethan. Hey, these are the, the, the ladies in my life my wife and daughter i'm noticing some like tears as i see my daughter's like um teeth she still looks like this by the way this is recent here are some facts that that justify me being here in front of you on this screen <laughs> um the main thing i think i'm known for is this website college essay guy where you signed up for this webinar or someone sent you this thing and like who is this guy over three million folks visited college essay guy last year which kind of blows my mind because i don't think that too too many more people apply to college each year than that I am a former missionary kid. I moved around a ton. I was the new kid at 13 schools um, in my 12 years, K through 12. So I know what it feels like to not belong and to like have to find belonging. That's, if I had to say like a skill or superpower, I think, I think that maybe is. I feel like I'm inching toward being able to claim that. It's like being able to find belonging and hopefully create it for other people. That's part of what I'm about. Part of my like life's work and mission is like creating belonging. Yes, in college, but also with some of the resources here. So if you really want to know, if you really knew me, that's really what I'm about is like helping people find belonging. Um, and I've never said that publicly, like in quite that way. So I'm just noticing that. Um, free stuff. I've got tons on the website. Collegesaguy.com slash free. All the resources you need. You may already know about these. Um, what else? We've got this cool scholarship. So if you identify as low income and you would like free essay and application help, We've got spots ready. We've got counselors standing by waiting for you who are like, you know, volunteer, amazing counselors. Um, and we pair you on a one-to-one -one basis. You just go to the website, collegesaguy.com slash matchlighters, sign up. There's like a Google form you fill out and we will pair you. And I'm not going to say no questions asked because there are lots of questions on the form. But once you, you know, identify, prove that you're low income, you get the support. That's it. Pretty simple. And we want you to apply like right now. Like if, if you spent this hour doing that instead, like I wouldn't be mad at you. Um, and then we've got what we're really proud at CEG. We have a one-for-one -one service model. So that means that if we end up working with a student, like one-on-one -on -one who pays for service, we also, this is separate from Match Lighters, work with a low-income student for free. So we're really proud of that. And it's something that we're just starting to talk about. I feel really proud of it and excited to like share that with you all. So, all right, what else, what else? Those are all the PSAs. Here we go. This is what we're about today. We're talking about the mapping process. So how do you figure out this whole college application process. Essentially, here's my description of it. What you're doing is you're taking you, all the pieces of like moments in your life, these memories, instances, like happenings, and you're trying to figure out how do you take all these and map them onto 
the gray boxes of the college application. And sorry, I'm covering up some of these. It says in the bottom corner, it says video and it says miscellaneous, but you don't need to worry about those too much. How do you do that? That's what we're talking about today. And eventually end up with these not gray boxes, but like beautifully colored boxes. Um, shout out to my friend Jason for, for making these beautifully colored boxes. Um, and we're going to dive into like different parts of this. So let's start with you. You might be trying to figure out a college. Like you've got 4,500 colleges out there. How do you figure out, this is the first snack, by the way. How do you figure out which of these colleges is right for you? One of my favorite resources in this whole college admissions world is Coursava. Uh, it's at Coursava.com. You get basically create students, you create a free account and you, you'll get a series of questions and they're called cards, but they're like digital cards. And you can basically figure out in like 10 minutes, what are you looking for? And it generates this cool report of your must haves, your would be nices. So yeah, in like 10 minutes, you'll have a sense of like, yeah, here's some of the things that I'm looking for, which is really useful when you're researching colleges because you may not know at this point, what are all the things? This is from 2018, which is like a while back, um, but whatever. They're still pretty similar. I still would like a green campus that is LGBTQ friendly, just saying. One of the things you'll see in the handout, which we'll share at the end, is a, basically a whole resource on how to create a great college list. And it has this like tracker that you can use. And it shows you like how to, once you've done course of and figured out what you're looking for, how to then actually go and find what colleges are good for the things that you're looking for. And then you can kind of track them on this sheet and, you know, put, what do you like? What do your counselor like? What do your parents like? This is one of those things that I think students and parents working together is a great idea. Essays, I think it can be a little trickier, but I think it's a really good idea to, uh, you can just, it's, it's free. You just make a, make a copy of this track all the things that you're looking for, have it in one place that you can share. And then other people can peek inside your brain and be like, hey, what are you, what are you thinking about, Bowdoin? Um, two of my favorite ones, if you're trying to figure out what are you looking for, the book, Do What You Are, which you can get on Amazon for like five bucks or something. And then You Science are two really good, somewhat different resources. So Do What You Are is based on Myers-Briggs, which some people heart and some people do not heart. Some people think that it's like, hey, this is not great science. But other people are like, I don't know. It helped me figure out like why I think the way I think or why like what my preferences were in terms of the way that I work. So I found it really useful in particular for finding careers and reading about careers that match up with your personality. So there's a little personality assessment at the start. And then you walk through and you look at different careers. And it helped me understand like why I was when I was before I was college essay guy, why I loved doing certain things in my job before and why I didn't love. And I've worked a ton of different jobs and I'm speaking specifically about like a curriculum writing job. And part of it was I didn't love that I wasn't specifically connected to helping. This is like a little I don't know. This is like vulnerable. This is like level four vulnerable for me out of 10. But like the heart of my type is helping people realize their potential. And when I realized that reading this book, I was like, hmm, maybe I should be doing something different other than like writing curriculum because I feel so not, not super connected to that. So that book helped me figure that out. You Science is a 90 minute assessment. I know 90 minutes a lot, but you basically get a sense of based on your interests and aptitudes, how you may or may not fit with certain careers. Um, so yeah, those are two that I love. Um, okay, early decision versus regular decision. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm trying to keep it light. I'll, I'll keep telling jokes. Um, if you're not sure if your early decision or regular decision, first of all, why does it even matter? Well, in some cases, here's a chart from Jenny Kent and Jeff Levy, who are the two stars of the admissions world. I'm so grateful that they do this each year. They basically go hunt and find on all of these schools, they create these Excel docs of like, what were the early decision acceptance rates? Which is to say, did you apply early by a certain deadline? Usually it's like November 1st or 15th. Or did you apply a regular decision like January 1st or 15th? And what they found is that the percentages were pretty different. So if you look at some of these, for example, you've got like um, Barnard. So Barnard's regular decision acceptance rate for the class of 2025, so that's this is last year, was 8.4%. So if you apply regular decision to Barnard, it's 8.4%. But if you apply early decision, it's like 33.4%. And their early decision, they, they, they admitted like 56% of their class early decision. Maybe that's good to know if you're wanting to apply to Barnard. Now, you got to be sure that it's really, there's a whole thing about like, don't just apply to the school because you have a better chance of getting your decision. You've got to be sure. You've got to be sure that you can pay for it. There are lots more other considerations. And we talk about them all in this podcast, which again, will be on the, on the handout that we share 
uh, in the email following up this session. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of good to know. Like look at, uh, for example, Bates College, 13.8% regular decision, 59% ED. I mean, Bates is a school where, as far as I know too, they still consider demonstrated interest, which we're not going to get in today. If you're curious about demonstrated interest, Google demonstrated interest, college essay guy. And there's more on that. Okay. Hopefully this isn't too, many, too much buffet vibes. Hopefully we're kind of in still tasting menu territory. A an original sentence, I'm sure. So let's get into the main personal statement, my favorite thing. So one of my favorite exercises is this one, the values exercise. And what it is, is a simple list of values. And what I'm actually, let's, 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 let's do this for a second together. Let's, let's take two minutes to do this. What I want you to do is I want you to identify from this list, you know, usually I do this when like sort of like a top 10 and then we count down five, three, one. But today I want to do it a little bit different. As you look at this values list, I want you to name a value that you're present to today and, and say why. So what is the value you're present? To? So for me, for example, when I look at this, there's like something about excitement. I, I'm, I'm present to excitement because there's a lot of cool stuff that I want to share with you. And I'm excited that there are 650 of you. So I'm like have extra energy. So like I would say excitement because I'm sharing things that I love because I'm doing something that feels in alignment with my not calling, but like helping people realize their potential. Um, and you're hopefully out there listening. So that's my like value and what I'm about like right now. What's a, what's a value that you're present to right now from this list? And I'll scroll down so you have some more options here. I know that my picture is blocking words. Sorry, I can't avoid it. Beautiful. So we got travel, the thing I love the most. Got that from my parents. And if you'll just give a few words about like, what is it that has you, you know, connected to that? So Tasneem says creativity. I love exploring new ways to communicate ideas. Awesome. Responsibility. I love leading. I feel like my blunt feedback and way of listening are made for it. Love it, Leva. Super clear. Intensity, says David. The college process. I feel you. Sending you the heart, all the heart emojis. Ooh, I love that you added freedom to that. Freedom is as important to you to travel. So like knowing that those are connected to you helps me understand your relationship to travel a little bit more. Beautiful. Yes, Rosemary. Talking about social change. Desperately needed. Yes. Awesome. Maciel says efficiency because I've achieved my goals for the day. Love it. Love it. Love it. Great. Okay. So this values list can be used in a lot of different ways throughout the college application process. One of them is just to figure out what are the different sides of you that you want to share with colleges. But also, I mentioned at the start of the session that one of the things that I think can be useful is to develop compasses. In other words, things that you can kind of ground in when you're feeling lost in this whole deal. So this, is, this may sound cheesy, but if you're feeling lost in this college application process, I want you to remember that at some point on a random Thursday afternoon, some white dude named Ethan said to you, hey, this values exercise could be useful in helping you figure out where you want to be headed. And what I mean by this is if you come back to this and you focus on three to five simple values, and it could just be like one value, I find this to be an incredibly grounding force because this is something that you can oftentimes, uh, that, that you can, that this, this will anchor you back in something that you can control in this process. So for example, um, somebody said, to, like Juliana saying diversity, I love to know different people and their backgrounds also as part of who I am as a mixed person. Like that's something, Juliana, that colleges want to know about. And so as you're trying to think about what do I focus on in my essays or my application, these core values can be anchoring forces, I think, in this process. And also hashtag in life. Um, but not even hashtag, like actually in life. Okay, another exercise that I really love for personal statements is using this question stem which is if you really knew me, dot, dot, dot. So I'm going to invite you, yes, all 647 of you, to share whoever feels comfortable uh, the rest of this sentence. If you really knew me, dot, 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 like what would I know about you? So let me model this. If you really knew me, Ethan, you would know. And I'm going to try and share something like not superficial. I'm going to try to go like one level deeper. If you really knew me, you would know that 
I I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna out myself. I spent like five minutes trying to think of something for this, and then I decided that I didn't want to come up with something early. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm gonna ask myself the question: So what? So what? What? So what? So what does that tell you about me? So that tells you that on the one hand, I want to be prepared. So I like want to do a good job. And that's because I, I want to, I want you, but if I'm real, I want you to like me and I want you to think I did a good job on this presentation. But also I didn't want to like make it up because I really value authenticity. And when things are like, um, like reheated, you can kind of tell when someone's like, oh yeah, they clearly have shared that before. So what? So now I'm feeling a little self-conscious because um, does this feel authentic? Ah, so like what I'm noticing is like, I'm really wanting you to get the real me. So what is the real me? I think it's this. I actually think it's this. It's me not knowing what I'm going to say next. So what does that tell you? Ah, what the thing that I'm going for here is like, I'm wanting you to see that in this process, in like the college application process, it's a process of discovering who you are becoming. And, um, and I want to, I want your personal statement to reflect like the latest version of that, not some version that you've like been telling for years, but like, what is the most up-to-date you? Okay. So there, there, that's a version of that. Now you're, if you really knew me could look very different. In fact, it's going to be very different from that, but I'd love to hear from some of y'all. If I really knew you, what would I know you know about you? So for example, love it, Martin, I like facing physical challenges. Now, what I want to encourage you to do, and all of you, whether you're typing it or not, is to add to this something that connects to a value. So let me go back to this values list. So the value that I connected to is authenticity, because that's something that's really important to me. I would also say spontaneity is important to me. Um, creativity, like doing things different, is kind of one that was also there. Um, you would, if you really knew me, says Darcy, you would know that I put everyone else first. Feel you on that, Darcy. I am a big caretaker as the oldest of five siblings and now a dad. Okay, Norlin says, if you really knew me, you'd know that I tend to overshare even to strangers because I'm quick to trust, even if it's a bad thing. Also wiggle fingers to that, Norlin. I vibe with you on that. If you really knew me, you would know I am basically shy, but have pushed against it for many years. Great. Okay, these are lovely examples. And if you keep asking yourself, so what? Cool stuff happens. And if you were to just answer this question stem like five times, or I love it when, if we were in a group together, I would have you do this with a partner and you just share with somebody else, like what is your, if you really knew me and then like let them share their, if you really knew me, cool stuff happens. So side note to teachers and counselors listening, like, and you, and if you, if you've been on these before, you probably heard me share this one before. And I love this one as a starter I, I, actually not a starter usually there's something that we need before it but then we can kind of go into this one and it's a pretty cool connective exercise um also good for family meals um yes we actually do this at our family okay the feelings and needs exercise is one that i know i'm jumping new snack um the feelings and needs exercise is for students who are who have faced challenges in their lives and want to map out that essay and i know that it's like weirdly cutting off the bottom of the screen I apologize for this. I don't know how to fix it. But what it says underneath it is in 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll make sure. Thanks, whoever let, let, let me know about that. I'll, I'll make sure to read what's at the bottom of the screen so you have it. But essentially, this is a 15 to 20 minute exercise. And again, you'll get the link after this. But it, answer, it asks, you, it asks you a series of questions. And on a Google Doc or on a piece of paper, you could map out your entire story. And this is based on you, the dude in the photo is not just some like like my grandfather or something. This is Marshall Rosenberg, who um, came up with this in, 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 in collaboration with some other folks, came up with something called nonviolent communication. And the, the heart of this exercise is about connecting our feelings to our needs. And the way this works is if I have a feeling about a thing, so let's say I feel, I don't know, how am I feeling today? I'm feeling excited. Why am I feeling excited? What is my need that's being met? The need that's being met for me is contribution, or at least I'm making up that I'm contributing something to your lives. Just let me let me have that story. Um, so when, when you're having a feeling that's quote unquote positive, oftentimes it's because there's a need being met. I'm also feeling like, um, oh, there's like another deeper thing where like I'm feeling some sadness. And part of it is like, I had like a really like a tender conversation with my wife earlier today, and I'm still like present to that conversation. So even though I'm feeling excited, 
there's also like this sadness underneath it. And what is the need there? The need for there is like, I'm feeling sad because I want like connection and understanding with her. So there's like the deeper, not deeper, but there's like another one, another example of that. So this exercise, and yes, we have literally had this, we have a list of feelings and needs that we've like kept on our fridge before, helps in communication in life, but it's also really super useful when you're writing your college essay. And if you're like, oh, that sounds kind of interesting, I encourage you to check out, Google the feelings and needs exercise at some point, if you face challenges and you think that they might be um, worthy of a college essay. Or if you're not sure, do that. Or if there's some challenge in your life and you're a parent and you're like, I could work through some, there's a challenge that I could stand to work through. I've heard this called the, the 20 minute therapy exercise. So um, anyway, you can, you can check it out. Okay, off to the handout. This is, my, this is my awkward transition slide where it's like reminding me that I need to now switch to the handout. Okay, I was like, should I make this more awkward? I don't know. Um, all right, here we go. Turning my screen share on. Here we go. All right, so here is the handout that you will get. This is my... Man, why does it cut off the top? It says College Essay Guys Tasting Menu 2022. And this is the menu. So far, we've got Corsava, if you really knew me, values, exercise, feelings, and needs, things we talked about. Okay, so here are the main dishes. First, I want to talk about improving your activities list. Now, your activities list is your brag sheet. Your brag sheet is like, essentially, you've got these 10 spaces on the Common App for describing the things you've done. And sometimes students are like, well, I can't remember what I've done. Or, yeah, I played volleyball, but like I just played volleyball. And I'm like, really? Like nothing more? So I throw at them this exercise. It's called the BBS exercise, which stands for the best extracurricular activity brainstorm I've ever seen. Hat tip to my brother, Devin, for coming up with this exercise. And it involves a series of questions and a little chart here where you can basically map out, first of all, what you did. So when you think about a project that you did, so some activity. So let's say you uh, are in journalism. Okay, great. You click this list and it is the, what I call the epic list of activities list verbs. And it's gonna help you remember the stuff you did. Because if you're looking, you're thinking about your activities and you're like, I don't know, I didn't really do anything. Well, is that true? Did you like communicate with people? And it's like, well, yeah, maybe I did. Okay, well, did you like collaborate? Did you uh, discuss? Did you document anything? Or did you interact or mediate or moderate? I'm going with this. Like you might go like, oh yeah, we did promote something. Yeah, we did publicize something. And it's gonna help give more variety in your short descriptions, because these descriptions are gonna be like 150 characters. And so this epic list of activities, those verbs helps you go, how do I prove that I accomplished something? We, oh, we did deliver the thing on time. Great, okay. So column one here is your activities list verbs. Just list the stuff you've done. And the way you're gonna do this, it's gonna end up looking like this. So for Chinese dance, I practiced every Sunday morning, performed at Chinese New Year's festivals, etc. Next column, problems you solved or tackled. And you might be like, well, I didn't really solve any problems. Well, think about it again. You're on a team, there are problems come up on the team, whether whatever sport it is, for example. Were there any personal problems, challenges you overcame? I became more confident. Uh, family, and that could be like within the family or the team, right? Uh, local, was there something in your school community, in your larger community? in your school, state level, national, global? What were the issues that you were challenging or dealing with, you were challenged by? Next, what did you learn? What skills did you gain? And this, I love that values exercise. So again, here's that values. And I don't know why it's spelled exercise. Maybe we can, you know what? We Could we switch this link out, Ashley? Because I think that this is like a one that someone else did. We'll switch the link out. Actually, I could, I'm not gonna do it right now. We'll switch this link out. But essentially you look at this values list and you go, okay, based on whatever you did, let's say volleyball, what are some values that you gained? Great, those values are values that could go in your list and could lead to interesting descriptions. Now, you might be thinking already, well, could this actually help me brainstorm an extracurricular activity essay? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Impact I had. So this is especially important for some of those extracurricular activity essays. If you're applying to the University of California schools, they love to know about impact. But in your activities list, which is what we're talking about here, if you can use numbers to actually show impact, like raised club membership from four members to 13, sweet, that's impact, okay? 
Um, can you use actual, and this is more for essays, can you use actual quotes to support your bullet points? So let's say you've got, you know, somebody that had a big impact, that was really impacted by your, you know, the thing that you did in, in, you know, biology class, you know, did somebody say, come up to you and say, wow, now I really get, you know, semi-permeable membranes or, well, I don't know, that's something from like fifth grade, but, you know, is there an actual quote that you could give from somebody? Now that won't fit in your activities list, but it could fit in a cool essay. And then finally, how did you apply what you learned? beyond the activity itself. Now, again, this is gonna be more for like when you're brainstorming an essay, but if you think about these five columns, uh, this is gonna give you tons of content and there are a bunch of questions that you can ask to basically up-level these columns and you're gonna to have tons to say in your activities list. You'll see an example here for Chinese dance club and then you'll see one here for rowing or rowing if you're a Brit and you like to fight. Uh, we've been reading Harry Potter, obviously, in my house. We're at the, we're at the beginning of book five in case anybody's curious. Don't, no spoilers, please. Um, the, oh, I already talked about this one, but the, the, the second thing that you can use basically for up-leveling your activities is this epic verbs list. And then finally, I, I like doing something called a value scan. A value scan is basically looking at your activities list. And if you're like, what is he even talking about this activities list? Activities list, college essay guy. Yes, I Google myself sometimes. You'll see an epic guide to this. And when, when, you'll see like, for example, a, a, a description will look something like this. Organized and ran meetings, set up field trips, brainstormed and created group art activities, wrote and sent newsletter to members. Okay, great, clear description. Here's what a value scan is. It's looking through and going, what values am I getting based on this particular description? So organized and ran meetings. Okay, the value is there is something like leadership. Set up field trips tells me that this person is like responsible brainstormed and created group art activities, that tells me they're creative, et cetera. And if you can find a range of values like I'm doing here, chances are it's a pretty good description. And if you find that the same values are coming up again and again, you know, then organize, 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 then it, it could be a sign to you that you might wanna switch up some of these phrases, some of the ways that you're describing it, okay? What's happening in the chat? Are we good? Book five is controversial, is it? Oh, okay. Somebody's, somebody's giving spoilers. Nobody, no, I don't want to even read what's happening in the chat right now. Okay. So those are some tips for the activities list. And again, we'll share out stuff. You can, there's this whole guide in this. I'll just link it here. So you have it. The value scan is explained in this link right here. Okay. An essay that some colleges require, but not all, is this why us essay. And the why us essay basically asks some version of why do you want to attend our school? Or why are you in the school a good fit? So here are three approaches in like, it's going to take me like, I'm going to do it in like the five minute version. So the first one is what I call the basic solid why us essay that includes a bunch of reasons. And the way it works is essentially you just research a whole bunch of reasons, like 10 reasons why you want to go to the school. And then you start off your essay with something like a description of what you want to study and why. And maybe you might say that the school is going to be a good fit for that. So for example, and I'm going to skip the hook for just sake of time. But this student basically says, this is their thesis, by combining the study of literature, media, and perhaps law, I believe the University of Michigan will provide the education necessary for me to evolve as a journalist. Okay, super clear, straightforward. This is the thesis. And then you can bet your bottom dollar that this next paragraph is gonna be about literature, this paragraph's gonna be about media, and this paragraph's gonna be about law. See how clear that is? Super clear, okay? So take a look here. A journalist cannot reach the peak of his craft if his knowledge of literature and critical thinking skills are weak. Enter Michigan, which is why I'm excited to explore what the Department of English has to offer. Give me some specifics. This is what I'm looking for in a YSA. I look forward to courses such as academic argumentation and professional writing. I know they're legit because they got capital letters. As I believe these will provide me with a firm basis in journalistic writing technique and improve my abilities to write analytically and develop well-supported arguments Praise the Lord. This is like, I love, this is like for me a textbook why us sentence because it's got two things. Number one, specifics from the school. Yeah, specifics, probably with capital letters. Not just like some good classes, but like academic argumentation and professional writing. You don't need to put course codes. And then the second essential part, because you don't just want to be like, hey, you got all these awesome classes, connect it back to you. What is it going to help you do? How is it going to help you up level, become the next best version of yourself? The next best? No, that would be like the second best. Then I want to become the better version of yourself. So notice all these specifics that the student's including. Now, 
could you then turn around and maybe like name other courses in another school and keep this part of the sentence the same if it's really good? You may. Will that other school find out? They will not. So one of the reasons why I think it's a really good idea to spend a lot of time and energy on your first one of these is if you can crush it, sometimes you might be surprised other schools have similar courses, but you can kind of put that out of your mind for the first ones of these. What you'll find in this essay, and you can look at it later, is you'll find that this student basically gives tons of reasons um, for the school, you know, and you can kind of scan and see like the capital letters. So there's the honors program that they're going to dive into, the Michigan Daily, this is under media studies. And then in pre-law, they're going to get involved in this advising program. And then they want to give back as well through the Boys and Girls Club of Southern Michigan, et cetera. So this is a really solid right down the middle, like love this essay, it gives a ton of reasons. The student got in. Yes, good job. Slightly more difficult. The three to five unique offerings strategy. Now this is harder to do, but you're gonna try and find three to five opportunities that are particular to the school. And this takes some research because you gotta find stuff that's not available at every single school. So you're probably not writing about study abroad in this essay because spoiler alert, every many schools have study abroad. I'm talking about specifics related to the school. So for example, this student who's passionate about neurotechnology is interested in courses like neurophysiology. And as someone, as someone who's interested in neurotech, the fact that Cornell is unique in offering classes devoted specifically to the field is very important to me. Yes, thumbs up, Ethan liked this post. Then you've got Dr. Chris Schaefer, whose research on deep neural activity is not being done anywhere else in the world. I don't know how the student knows that, but apparently they know this. More examples. Cornell is the only university I'm interested in that offers a speaking course in Latin, conversational Latin. And oh, by the way, this paragraph right here gives me a sense of the reasons that the student wants to study Latin because it like makes your brain better, basically. What you'll notice, again, doing the five minute version when you read this essay is that there's more student in this essay and a little bit less Cornell. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think if you read this essay, you'll be like, 50% student, 50% Michigan. You may, it might even be like 60% Michigan, 40% student. And this one is a little bit more like 30% Cornell and like 70% student. And there's not like a perfect ratio here. It's just sort of like, can you find specific reasons, um, you know, that, that are particular to the school? And then you've got more room if you're only going to find three to five. Because the other downside, downside of this is that there are fewer reasons mentioned, but they're more like, special reasons. This is like a, a greater number of reasons, but they're more, yeah, other schools are probably going to have professional writing courses. So there's not like a correct approach here. I would say try to find unique offerings. If you can't go with the Y Michigan approach. Okay. There's another approach, which I'm going to talk about just briefly, and it's the one value strategy. And I think it's better for schools that have really short YS essays or are somehow signaling that they see, they want this kind of approach. So for example, Bowden asks, you know, reflecting on your own interests, please comment on one of the following, intellectual engagement, the common good or connection to place. And this student's essay, let me just clarify, student essay here <laughs> begins, and it basically describes their connection to place. And if you notice this, there's not a lot of like Bowden specifics Bowden, in fact, isn't mentioned until like the last paragraph. This is a 258 word essay and Bowden isn't mentioned until 202 words in and it works beautifully. The thing that it relies on is a beautiful story that goes partic particularly well with the prompt. And that's sometimes hard to find. So I think this is probably the hardest one to write. And I, again, I don't think it's for every school. I think it's for those schools that have a very particular YS essay that's maybe asking you to focus on a particular value. Generally, I would say the other ones, the Michigan and the Cornell approaches can work for most schools. Okay. Some of you may be wondering, how do we pack in a bunch of reasons? If it's just a hundred words, you're probably going to need to pick like your top three reasons and say a little bit about why each would mean something to you. And that's probably all you'll have room for. Um, I would say, by the way, probably pick more than just one reason, unless it's like the best reason and you can go super deep with it. But uh, it's for range. I would go a little, some academics, some social fit, et cetera. All right, where are we on our menu? Ooh, COVID on the menu. Yikes, sorry, bad taste, poor taste, I apologize. Um, so there's a whole guide that I put together on this. 
Um, and it's right here. It's the it's basically the guide to how to write about COVID-19 in your college application. Now, this is something that hit, has hit close for a lot of us, myself included. Um, the short version of how to write about this is that if you're applying via the Common App or the Coalition App, which are two of the most important or most popular apps, uh, platforms for applying to college, you can use the COVID specific section. And there's a specific section where they ask what, how has COVID impacted your life? You can totally use bullet points in this section. In fact, I would recommend it and just keep it informational. If you're describing challenges that you faced, I would use this format, which is what are the challenges and the effects? What did you do about it? And then what did you learn? I think that oftentimes, especially if we're writing about these things for the first time, we might be tempted to use the whole 250 words describing the challenges and the effects, which can be relevant, but only if you expel out the relevance to the reader. So in other words, what I would say is, let the reader know, here's how this impacted me, what I did about it, and then here's what I learned. And you'll see some examples in this guide above. Um, in fact, let me just show you really quick. Um, whoops, that's not the link. Let me just show you a quick example. Um, I'm going to search for the word abuela, because that's where it's not coming up. Let me see. Okay. Here we go. Oh, that was a different, maybe that was a guide. Okay, here it is. Here's, this is a good example. Living in rural North Carolina, I have limited access to a consistent high-speed internet connection. During the pandemic, oh, that was Jacqueline's example. I was a separate doc, sorry. My family didn't have the means to upgrade to a higher internet speed. We were working hard around the house trying to make ends meet. This meant I was often able to access, to, unable to access the internet in, to turn in assignments when they were due. It was also difficult to concentrate because our house is very small and everyone was working in close proximity. Although I found it hard to focus on schoolwork, I communicated these problems to my family so we could work together, organize a rotating schedule for my parents. Does this sound like familiar to any of you at the start of the pandemic, trying to figure out folks are working and on school? Do you explain what you did? Um, what, did what happened? What did you learn? What I, I used what I had at my disposal to make the best out of a difficult situation. I learned organization and clear communication, and I found ways of adapting my work to fit new time constraints. And we'll bring this knowledge with me to college. Simple, clear description. Notice how straightforward it is. That's totally fine. Okay. In fact, I think readers will prefer it. And you can, yes, totally use bullet points. Some students didn't necessarily face significant challenges. So what I would say to you, if you didn't necessarily face significant challenges, is look up that values exercise. And yes, I'm Googling again. And go, okay, what are three values or even two values that I connected with more deeply over the last couple of years due to the circumstances of the pandemic? So it could be, for example, I became more connected to my health and I started to walk every day. And so you could share a little bit about that. Or it, and it could be that you like connect more with nature. Or it could be that you learned, maybe you started like some kind of project and you learned that leadership can happen virtually, right? So what is the project that you started and what, did you, what lesson did you learn about leadership? So it could be that there are positive things that came out of this. And I think you can basically briefly share those. Um, and again, here's the list. You'll have it on this doc. Uh, focus on, I would say, one to three specific values. I wouldn't necessarily recommend writing about coronavirus for the personal statement because it's going to be such a, it's going to be a common topic. Also, I feel like you can fit a lot of the essential info into the COVID specific section, or you can fit in the additional information section. So another kind of underused part of the application is if you search additional information, call it essay guy. You'll find this guide. Whoops, let me go pull this back. There we go. Um, the, the additional information section is a guide that when you get into the common app, you'll see that it's like additional information and you can share 650 words on kind of whatever you want. If you feel like you need a little more space to share the impacts of the pandemic on you, you can totally put it here. The value of that is that then you can use your personal statement. I'm going to share my face for a second. Um, so that you can see that I'm super serious about this. The value of that is that you can put all the COVID stuff there and then you can share all your awesomeness in the personal statement and not be defined by like the last, the circumstance of the last two years or three years. They can be like, here's all this awesome sides of me. Cause there's so many different things that you could potentially write about. We've only kind of scratched the surface today. The, Cause the alternate, if you were to take the, the COVID-19 descriptions and put those in your personal statement, then you leave your COVID-19 section blank and you can't really like put a personal statement in there. So I would just say, take that information, put it here. And then you can do whatever you want in your personal statement. 
the purpose of your application really in, in like the big picture is to demonstrate the skills, qualities, interests, and maybe most importantly, the values that you're bringing with you to a college campus. Um, that's why I started with values and I come back to it so often is that finding what those values are, just identifying those for yourself and, and exploring how those have manifested in your life um, is, you, I think you feel like you can't go wrong. Okay. Um, what else? Ooh, let's do research. Okay. So I think, let me, did I do all the things? I think I did. Yes. Okay. We're going to, we got plenty of time for Q and A. Before we do that, I want to do a little buffet moment where I want to share with you a bunch of resources that we have on the website, um, put together specifically for you. So what have we covered so far? How to develop your college list, some resources for thinking about your personal statement, activities list, YSSA and the COVID-19 section. So I've delivered the things that I wanted to deliver with this exception. Um, so we put together this college application hub that is a gathering place for some of my favorite guides and resources. Oh, you know what I didn't talk about yet? I didn't talk about the parent community. That's another cool thing that we just started. And I'd love to share more about that. Um, and it's free right now. So like, um, let me, I'll share about that in just a minute for parents out there. It's super cool. Um, okay. First, the free resources. So by the way, if you're an international student, there's a whole separate hub for you. Sometimes people don't know what the word hub is. Hub is like the center of all the things. And in my world, in terms of college applications, this is the center of all the things. So what you'll see in here is guides to things like developing a great college list, which we've talked about briefly. I mentioned that I would share with you a sane college admissions timeline. Here you go. There's even a, a little downloadable college application info tracker with ninth grade stuff for the six of you who are in ninth grade on this call, 10th grade, 11th grade, et cetera. You get it. I don't need to scroll down through the whole thing. There are some resources on how to research colleges without visiting a campus, how to decide early action, early decision. There's even a cool flow chart um, that you can work through there. What else? Oh, some of the exercises I mentioned, feelings and needs exercise, the values exercise are here, but there are also some really good ones for like, when you're starting to figure out, trying to figure out what am I, what do I want to say on my application? All the things are here. Here's that guide to COVID-19. Um, what else? There's a whole bunch of stuff on essays. If you happen to be a transfer student, we've got a guide on that. Um, oh, check this out. School specific supplemental essay guides. So say you're applying to, oh, I don't know, the University of Chicago, click this. Wouldn't it be nice if someone just like walked you through how to write those prompts? Et voila. Um, so you'll see all the different options. If, by the way, look up here. If it says 2022 to 2023, that's this year. That means it's updated. If it doesn't say that, it means it's last year's. So like, for example, let me pick one that we haven't updated yet. NYU? Oh, no, we've updated NYU because it stayed the same. Um, um, Pomona? Yeah. Okay. So this is last year's guide. So if it says 2021 to 2022, don't, it's going to be updated in like a week, maybe two. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put pressure on our team, but uh, it's going to be updated soon. But essentially you can find guides to pretty much all the essays. Uh, University of California, we've got guides for that. Uh, the YS guide. Some of these have really epic um, videos. Sorry, this is totally buffet moment. Just naming that for you. On my YouTube channel, um, I basically recorded like walkthroughs for some of these and they're hopefully kind of fun and it's got like um charts and stuff that you can use and i, and I have sleepy eyes in some of the videos um but oh, and if you obviously if you're interested the youtube channel is like a good That's place to awesome. go to what like, are those whoops, oh my gosh things from sorry um here i'll just share this one because we were just talking about the ys video um smash that like button <laughs> don't forget to hit the notifications bell if you subscribe i'm kidding um so you got the extracurricular activity essay, why major? We don't have time to talk about all these today, but all these guides are here. Um, how to get great recommendation letters. So there are a couple different guides. This is a, there's a guide for students. Um, and there's also guides for teachers and counselors that were written with you know, awesome counseling friends through NACAC. Um, interviews, there's a super epic guide on interviews um, and a video that goes with that. That's, there it is, it's right here. Crush college interviews, look at that. That's some YouTube text right there, isn't it? How to crush your college interviews. Uh, there's a guide on paying for college. Anyway, I don't need to go through this whole thing because I don't want to like overwhelm you, but 
here are all the things. This is the one to bookmark. If you were going to bookmark one, this is the one that I would say bookmark. Okay. Pause. I said I'd give away a book. So let's do that. And then let's do questions. Let's see. Ba -dum -bum -bum, ba -dum -bum. Let's see. I'm, I'm scrolling for questions. Smash that like button. Yeah, good. I'm glad you laughed. I'm glad you got my joke. Okay. So let's do a pop quiz. Um, actually, you know what we can do? Let's do this. Let's do it this way. Because I, I am going to tie it to like a, um, I want, here's what I'm going to say is I, because this is like, this is totally like Mr. Beast mode, but I will, I will give a, we'll give two books to random folks who subscribe and then comment on one of the videos. I know that's kind of like cheesy marketing stuff, but I actually want you all to subscribe to it because I do, now that I think about it, like I actually do want you to get the resources. So We'll give away, okay, let's do this two ways. Let's do it because I do want to deliver on my promise that I said I was going to ask a silly question. So we'll give away three books. We'll give away two to two random folks who are subscribers who comment on videos. And Ashley, we'll just find those tomorrow. Um, and I don't know. It, don't just say like, I want the free book, but say something. I don't know. I don't know. You could, I guess. And then the other one, let us let me ask a random question about something that I've covered. So this will be like the pop quiz moment. Um let me look, I gotta look back and see. Ooh, what was the name of the website for developing your college list in like, not developing your college, but finding what colleges you're looking for in about 10 minutes? Who was the first person who can tell me what the name of that website was? There's like a 15 second delay. So we have to like, I have to wait. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, uh, nope, not yet. There we go. Okay, Noah, you won. Corsava, you got it. So Noah, email help at collegeessayguy.com and Ashley will send you, a, and just send your address. Yeah, you have to send your mailing address and you'll get a free book. Oh, a bunch of people remember that it was Corsava. Okay, cool. Oh, I said I was gonna talk about the parent community. So give me two seconds. And then we're gonna do questions. Um, there we go. Okay, quick plug for the parent community because it's awesome and we're really excited about it. Um, let me do this. I was trying to share the way you share something on Zoom. All right, so here's our parent community, your home for college planning support. Okay, so this is Loren, who is amazing. She's a counselor at Sidwell Friends School. Um, by the way, might have might have been a counselor for a president's daughter. Um, she's amazing. This is only for parents, by the way. Um, we've got basically weekly sessions with not only Loren, but we bring in experts, including there's this, I, 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 I'm like wanting to pre-announce something. In a few weeks, we're having a very exciting expert who was a former dean of admission who's going to be joining us. Um, I pop in there from time to time to do Q and A's. We've also got our directors of college counseling, who are amazing. Um, we've got lots of like when you've got questions about like, hey, what classes should my student take, or they haven't taken pre-calc, is that okay? Those kinds of questions, questions about like you know college list. Uh, questions about like, what about this as an essay topic? These things are questions that they handle in all these Q&A sessions. Um, and it's all free for the next month. So come in and join. That's me talking to Tom, who worked at Pomona a, a couple years, as of two years ago. Here are core values. Yeah. All right. I'll just stop. I'll just throw this into the chat so we can do Q&A. Would love to have some of y'all join. Um, and it's super, it's going to be super low cost. It's going to be like less than 30 bucks a month, I think. So it's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's like less than Amazon prime. Um, I think. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. That's the link. That's the parents hub. That's going to be the parents hub officially. Um, we've got more parent resources that we'll share in future emails. Um, but okay, let's do questions. I just subscribed. Thanks Mia. All right. How many videos do you have to comment on? Just one Zoe. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Scrolling down to questions. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm scrolling down through all the Corsavas because that pushed out all the questions. I'm sorry. There are too many Corsavas. I need more. Oh, the Discord link. Yeah, we'll put the Discord link again. We've also got a student community. There we go. Um, what is this? Okay, questions. Is there a way to identify colleges that are more likely to give merit aid? There's a podcast for that. 
So if you go to collegeessayguy.com slash podcast, so check this out. Here we go. Podcast, podcast, financial aid, searching financial aid. Here we go. All right. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on financial aid. Which schools are most generous with financial aid? So there's the U.S. version with Jeff, and then there's the international version with Jenny. And yes, there are spreadsheets for that, and they've got them on their website. So let me just share with you their website. Here you go. Um, check this out. Boom. I'm just I'm just sharing the link, so you'll have that. Um, and you can find the which schools are most generous. Their spreadsheets are on there. This was the most interesting webinar I've ever been a part of. This was really fun. Oh my gosh, Norlin, can I quote you on that? Stop it. I'm blushing. Okay, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. APA, the question, let's see. Of international students, it seems linked to general guidance and resources. How does one-on-one -on -one coaching differ? Just email us and we'll tell you more. Is there a way to, I, nope, I did that one. Um, what ratio of reach target and safety schools is ideal? Samantha, I would say like, you're going to probably want to aim if you're a domestic student in like the eight to 12 range for schools. And like, I would go like a third for each. So like, you know, whatever, three to four in each category. That's what I'd say. There's not like an ideal number. I just want to make sure you've got at least like two schools that you're pretty sure that you can get into and that you actually like. Is test optional really optional for elite colleges? I mean, I'm trying to take them at their word, RJ. It's a good question, but Here's what I would say for international students. I think that in some cases, tests can be more important because they're looking for what are those things that, you know, and I don't want to say like every international student should test, but I think that because I know international students last year who like got into great schools, but didn't have tests. But if you, if you look at your application and you go, okay, does my whole application spell out? Yes, I would excel at this school then maybe you don't need that test score. But if you're like, ah, oh, my application feels like it's lacking and I feel like this would really bolster my, you know, my, my whole application in their eyes, then maybe do it. I know that's kind of vague advice because it's hard to know. The best thing I would say, RJ, is talk to your counselor, okay? If you're a transfer student, how do you write an essay? Sheila, literally Google transfer essay, college essay guy, and you'll see a seven-step guide to writing that. I'm in the parent hub. Thank you so much. Super helpful to guide the kids who are not interested, not so interested, but very talented. Awesome. Elijah, it's great to have you. How can you use the additional info section on Common App and not sound whiny? Just be factual, Yana. So again, if it's like a challenge you face, talk about what you did and what you learned from the experience. And go, go Google additional info, college essay guy, and you'll see examples of that. I'm planning to see, do, 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 do. I'm trying to like, Let's see. Tips for the why the scholarship essay. I'm not sure what you mean by the why the scholarship essay. Advice on tackling the how will you contribute to your community essay? I mean, yeah, Google community college essay guy, and you will find a whole guide to that. I'm trying to like, I'm right now I'm playing like operator and I'm like, you know, plugging you into these different resources because there's a whole thing on that. And it would take me like five to 10 minutes to explain it to you, but you'll find a whole thing on that. Excellent info share. Um, and working with students, always something new. Awesome, MJ, glad to have you. Marsha, if your student really wants to talk about code in the main essay, any tips to make it stand out? That's that's also in that guide, Marsha. It's, there's a whole thing on like, okay, if you really do want to go there, here's what I would say. For the UC activities list, should you try to use all 350 words for each activity? Heads up, Samantha, it's not 350 words. So if you're talking about the personal insight questions, that's 350 words. If you're talking about the, the activities list, that's 350 or in some cases, 500 characters. And if you Google UC activities list college as a guy, yes, there's a guide for that. How long should we spend brainstorming? I mean, I would say, Samantha, spend a good couple hours brainstorming. In other words, if you're in, the, in all, a lot of the resources that I shared on the hub are going to help you do that. But I would say at least spend, I want to say like an hour and a half brainstorming. Some students dive in with the first thing or they're like, I want to write about baseball. And it's like, I've read so many baseball essays. So... I would encourage you not to not to focus on like a, a common extracurricular activity in your main statement. Okay. I would say focus on something else or weave that into like a paragraph, but I'd focus on other things. Should I do courses related to what I want to study or a harder class? Oh, it's so hard to give you advice on that without knowing you show. Um, so I I guess the short answer is like both. Because if it's what you want to study, yes. Should you do harder classes? I mean, yes. 
Um, I heard you can negotiate financial aid. Is that true? You can, Lakeisha. If you if you look at uh, if you Google if go to the hub and go to the financial aid section, and there's something on how to appeal a financial aid award letter. So if you didn't like the money you got, and you've got a good reason to be like, y'all should give me more money, it, there's an example letter that you can write. Um, domestic student. Oh, Norlin, domestic student just means like a student in the U.S. Sorry. Does early decision mean I will pay full price? Usually, yeah. It depends on your, you know, your FAFSA. In other words, your, your, it depends on the way, like your financial aid profile, I'll put it that way. Could you talk about a good way to organize our time for our application to be solid? Ooh, I kind of like this one, Philippe. And we're at time, but I'm going to hang out for another five minutes. So for those of you who are still here, let's keep jamming. Um, here's what I say, Philippe, right now, if you're still in summer and hopefully you still are, you haven't gone back to school yet. Over the next few weeks, I'd say now is a great time to organize all the essays you're gonna to need to write. There's something called an essay tracker. It's on the application hub. And basically it's gonna help you organize all the supplemental essays that you need to write. And I, I would love for you to do that first. And obviously that's gonna require you to develop your college list so that you can have a sense of what the workload is ahead of you. Because once you can do that, you're kind of sitting at the dashboard and you're like, okay, here are all the things that I need to get done. Um, and then, I, I'm kind of selfish, like I'm kind of greedy with students, like in the, in the summer, I'm like, I'll take whatever I can get. And what I mean by that is like, I think if you can spend, let's say an hour a day on this, at least in the summer, getting stuff done, it's going to really serve you. I mean, my hope is that you can get a great start on your personal statement and your, if you're going to apply early, get a start on your early schools. So I, I hesitate to give you like to give 500 people, like here's how many hours you should spend. Cause you all need to like sort of figure that out for yourselves. But I would say like, if you can spend a few hours a week for sure, because it's, it's going to save you a, like now in the summer, it's going to save you a lot of time in the fall because you're going to be so busy when school goes back. So if you can plug in and get a bunch done, great. And then I would say keep weekends like somewhat light in the fall because it's going to fill up with activities and you're going to want a little bit of time, I think, to develop your essays. It takes some time. I think students often underestimate how much time their personal statement is going to take them. So I would strongly recommend saving a little bit of time on weekends for, for that. And then if you have the opportunity to not pack your schedule, like all the way to the brim, sometimes it's like looking at those activities that are gonna be like, okay, what are the activities that I'm like super, super excited about? Are there other ones that I'm like less excited about or that have less impact on my life or on others that I can maybe opt out of or take a, a lower leadership responsibility or like less responsibility so that it doesn't end up being something that just eats up all your energy because you're gonna be working kind of like a part-time job with these essays. And it's gonna be somewhere between like two hours to like, 10 hours a week, just depending on how much time you, you're able to get, how much you're able to get done over the summer. So for it to be solid, it's hard to say. Um, I guess what I would ask is like students who are on this call right now, how much time are you putting in right now? Just give us a range. It could be zero hours that you're putting in right now. It could be that some of you are spending a lot of time, um, but th that will give maybe Philippe a sense of like how much time other people are spending. Um, it's hard for me to say specifically, but let me try and commit to like a range, Philippe. If you could spend an hour a day during the summer, I would be like happy. If you could spend more than that, even better. Um, and then I think once school starts, I'd say if you could spend a few hours on the weekend, like let's say three hours on Saturday or Sunday, I think you could probably do a pretty good job. It's gonna probably get a little bit more intense right before deadlines, but that's sort of like the, I think the sort of sane version and you could probably put together a good application with, with that, that much time. Um, how many personal statement ideas should you come up with? Good question, Gabriela. I would say two to three because I don't want you to like just, just charge after your first idea. I think coming up with a few different ideas could really serve you because one, what are the odds that the first idea you come up with is the best one? Two, could be that you combine the ideas. Um, is there a three? There may be, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of related to like combining. I don't know, let's just go with those two. Like keep brainstorming. And, 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 and then I would say, just pick one, pick one and go with it. If you're not sure which two, then try a draft of each of those. Does your website cover how to find good safety colleges? I'm having a great time with that. Yeah, if you go into the guide, so go to Corsava and you'll see like all the things related to that. Ba -dum -bum -bum -ba -dum -bum. I'm a counselor and I would love one of your books. Amazon? I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty inexpensive. Uh, the reason I say that, Lakeisha, is if I were to give you one, then other counselors would be like, well, I want one too. So 
link for the parent hub. I can't find it in the CG website. So the parent community, yes. And we need to get that link up. We just launched the parent community last week. So we're going to get that link up really soon. Um, someone else is asking for it too. Let's share it. There we go. Ashley shared it out. This guy has a guide for everything. <laughs> I'm gonna, I want to like screenshot these and like caption them. Okay, let's let's end with this one. What's one thing you wish you knew when you were applying for colleges? Here's what I wish I knew, Grady. I wish I knew how many amazing colleges there are out there because I think I had no idea and I didn't know how to research and the internet was like kind of new uh, and the re resources were like not that plentiful. But now there are so many great schools that want you and that you can get into. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds. The average acceptance rate for colleges is like 67%. It's somewhere between 60 and 70. And this has been this way for years. But the problem is people focus only on these like highly selective schools that are like 3% acceptance rates. And I just want you all to know that it's so... There, it's so possible to get into a great school and have an amazing experience. And there are so many schools out there who want you and who will give you money. So it really just takes research. Some of these resources hopefully will help. And again, focusing on what you can control, which is like, what are the things, you know, doing great brainstorming to figure out what are those skills, qualities, values that I want to show, and then taking the time and energy to put them into like really specific, um, you know, these little, little colorful boxes, these essays. Um, so anyway, I hope these resources will help. I'm here with you on this journey. Parents, we've got this parent community where there's like plenty of time to connect and stuff. And students, I've got tons of stuff coming up. I've got lots of pay what you can courses. There's no barrier, financial barrier to joining those. So I'd love to hang out with y'all more. So feel free to join. There's one coming up like next week or something. So anyway, I'll see y'all hopefully soon. Much love. And I hope this has been useful. Bye.